Hello and welcome back. Okay, so in the last VJ video, I made this. That's the tile map PCB, only it had some problems. I'd reversed the bits between memdata and these registers up the top, and that caused us some visual artifacts. I did manage to resolve that in software by adding some code in that inverted the bit order before writing data. I also managed a hack involving switching the cables around that uh, got it more or less working without needing the software hack. So that's kind of cool, but I really do need to fix this circuit properly. I should also direct people to my latest extras channel video where I unboxed and did some initial tests with my new soldering hot plate. Now, there's quite a lot of components on here and I've kind of ordered that just in hopes that it will make the whole job of soldering up a new version of this a lot easier. So um, let's take a look at the initial problem. Okay, so that's all up and running. We've got garbage on the screen at the moment because the RAM chip will initialize to completely random data. But if I allow the CPU to start running, it should clear the screen. Okay, let's fire up a demo. Okay, so we can see this is working correctly, but we also know these cables are the wrong way around. So the colors still look right, but the memory write section wasn't actually the problem. So the data in the RAM should be correct. So I need to restart this program. So now we've reset it, the colors look correct again but the register writes are completely garbled and that's what we need to modify the circuit for. So let's go back and have a look at our mistake. Now the mem data lines here map in a bit reversed fashion to the outputs of the registers. So to fix that, we even need to switch around all of the outputs or all of the inputs so they match. And I'm just trying to think what's gonna be easier so all of these outputs here both go up to one of the LEDs and down to a counter input, but these inputs just go across. So I think that's the right thing to do. Also know that that's where the mistake was made was when I switched mem data to VJ mem data. Could have avoided so much bother if I just uh, paid more attention there. I think it's going to be easier if I remove these ground fills. They're easy enough to rebuild. Ah, so those ones changed already. Okay, I think for those lines, the uh, the right way was a lot easier than the wrong way. Now I'd rather not move any components so I can keep the same stencil. Right, so that's resolved, but I've also become very conscious since I designed this PCB that I need to pay more attention to ground return paths. So I'm going to put a few extra ground pins in to 
connect the ground to the back plane well. I'd kind of like to put a ground pin here as well. There's no room on the right. All right, need to match those ground pins with the holes on the back plane. Now the temporary back plane is not going to have those, but if we stick it in the master, we'll uh, utilize them next time we refresh. And all importantly, we have to change the version number to show our shame. Right, let's get this ordered. Let's take a look. This box came a little bit dented. Okay, without the 1.1 on it, it would be difficult to tell. Just those extra ground lines I added to uh, give it a bit more visual distinction. Because these lines actually do feel a bit neater. Now the resistor arrays over here when I tested my hot plate, they were a lot easier when they had a lower amount of solder on them. curious to know how the time is different between the first attempt at this and the second attempt because if I try and go too quickly that could actually cause me to make mistakes. If anything, I'm a little low on solder paste for these pads. But we've always had bridging problems with them, so let's give it a try. Okay, despite double checking, I think I put all of those on the wrong way around. Let's finish these off and then switch them around. Got the wrong chips there. I right, can get rid of one of these here.
Now, I did hit one small problem. I didn't have enough of these 157s to make up this board. But I did have some of the ACT 157s. And for the lower address bits, that shouldn't make any difference. Uh, when I edited this, I should have fixed the text being upside down relative to the components. I tend to look at this notch on the end a bit more, so it wasn't too much risk. Right, let's get the hot plate out and solder this. Those resistor arrays look pretty good, no solder bridging at least. This chip down here was the last to reflow as far as I could see. I still haven't worked out what the ideal illumination for soldering is. For a lot of things more light is always better, but the problem with soldering is there's lots of bits of reflectivity, like the PCBs and the desk. Now I'd say there's a pretty good chance this is going to just work. We know the ordering of these bits was the only thing that was actually problematic on the original PCB. The only thing I need to do now is get the build out and uh, give it a test. Now we can see the boards side by side. They're almost identical. Now we have the extra ground pins on here that don't actually connect to anything on the back plane. But they are okay to just sit there for now, I think. Okay, let's power it up. Right, that doesn't look right. We're not supposed to have a colour on screen there. Okay, well, the register right has happened correctly. Okay, let's try running that same side scrolling demo and see what we get. Okay, um, this is looking promising, but obviously that feels like one of the color lines is wrong. Right. Zero, 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 zero. So top green bit is one, bottom blue bit, both blue bits. All right, so I'm not expecting any difference here, but. Okay, so the output from the latch register is constantly low, as is the input. Let's pull this back out. I think we need to trace some of those lines under the microscope. I 
and we need to think about what could cause this problem. Now, if the RAM output wasn't making it to the input, so if the output from the RAM chip here, and that's the fifth line along, is the top bit insofar as we mapped it. Okay, that's got a signal. So I'm pretty sure the output there is going to make it up to there. That says the correct signal will make it out of the RAM chip into the latch and to the output line. So it must be going in. Now, when we're writing to the RAM chip, we disable output enable, and then we use this line driver to push the data from mem data in. I severely doubt we've messed up the connection there. I suppose it could be a bad solder join. No, it's okay. So the only other possibility, assuming all the chips are working, we haven't fried any, is, right, there's the top bit. That was one of the dodgy ones. And we have no continuity there. But if I push on the wire, I get some. I'm really hoping I can fix this without completely switching back to soldering desk layout. It's a top bit of green and then the two bits of blue. So that's just these three lines here. And they were the last bits to reflow. And I'm thinking maybe everything down there is suspect. Okay, let's get this thing back in. Okay, screen's gone black, which uh, is correct behavior. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's amazing. Now, obviously it would have been awesome if we got this perfect working first time, but considering a lot of the touching up that we normally have to do, particularly on like the resistor arrays, um, this soldering method has actually still proven to be really good. And I suspect if we go back and look at the video footage, these ones were the last to go. The alignment of this chip isn't quite perfect. And maybe the solder paste wasn't absolutely spot on. I'm going to look closely at the footage once I've got it off the camera to, uh, to see how that was. Well, I'm over the moon we got that working. I was slightly concerned for a moment that there might be a third board revision incoming. The whole experience of using the hot plate for reflow was also really awesome. Those free pads that didn't flow properly I need to kind of pay attention to the process a little bit more there, but as a first attempt with a proper component count, I think that went really well. So that's a good addition to the whole process we're using on, in this build. Okay, I very much hope you found this interesting. I've got one small little thing to add on to the end of this video, and I think some people who've uh, been paying attention to my extras channel will know what's coming, but uh, hope you found it interesting. I'll see you again soon. Now we add 1.0 to the frame of shame. I don't know if I'm most worried about running out of space or fatiguing these little metal clips. But this is actually quite a nice little display. All right, goodbye.